Alright guys, welcome to your 33rd project video, and in this video, we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff. You guys are going to see, I don't need to give you a little preview, but before I begin, I actually do need to mention this. In the last video, I made a little uh, mistake. I put the equals equals 32 before, pretty much inside the parentheses, and of course you need to put it outside the function because the string lang function tests the variable counts the number of characters in it and then once you have that number you can test whether it's equal to 32 so again make sure your code looks like this and that's the proper coding so the next thing I want to do is I want to test if the key and the email variable are set since so check this out they're only going to be set if they passed this test and this test this little if statement so now if they're set then they must be good variables so let's go ahead and do that right now if is set and again I'm gonna be doing this twice once for email and just put and 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 another time for a key just cheat a little here key if both of these variables are set then they must be good variables we can continue by querying the table and we want to look for the row and we want to grab the user information where the email equals this email and the key equals this key. Now we're going to only get one row back because obviously you can't use the same email to register multiple accounts and that unique key is only going to be unique on one row not through like many users so let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to take their information and store it in a result set. Now set this equal to my SQL underscore query and actually I need to do a little bit of housekeeping first our query is going to go in there but or die my SQL underscore error just in case we accidentally type our query wrong or anything else but now we get to the good stuff so again like I said what we're going to be doing is we're going to be querying or selecting all of the information from the table temp users but we're not just going to be selecting every row. We only want to select the row where the email is equal to whatever email we grabbed from the URL and the activation code is equal to the key that we grabbed from the URL. Now what I want to do just right at the end of this is I want to limit it to one because we should only get one result back because like I said before you can't have multiple users with a single email it doesn't make sense now I want to mention this uh, before I go on there are several different ways that we can actually get the columns or the information from this result set and store it in variables that we can work with in PHP you can use it you can store the information in a bunch of different types of arrays or you can store it straight in variables what I like to do is I like to store it in an array that uses keywords instead of numbers because whenever you query your information you can't be like okay is um, you know index 0 username or is index 4 username it's very confusing so let me go ahead and uh, explain this well you know what? I'm just gonna show you guys I like to make a while loop and whenever you uh, this is just the easiest way so go ahead and set a variable called a row and set it equal to my SQL underscore fetch wow that's not an underscore underscore fetch underscore array now what this function is going to do is it's going to take a result set or a query as a parameter now it's going to store all of the information that it queried in the variable row now of course what if there are multiple rows then what are you going to do well obviously what this while loop does is it loops through the information row by row and the reason that I'm using a while loop even though we only query to one row is because there are going to be certain instances where you only get one row back whenever you query the database or let's say that a user is searching for items well maybe they have a thousand results well this while loop is going to work with one result a thousand results a hundred it's the same code that we can use over and over and over again how awesome is that so that's why I like to use a while loop no matter if we get one result none or a thousand so 
each row that it loops through, it's going to give you a set of variables for that row. So let me go ahead and the set we got back is a user ID, user name, email, and password. So for the first user ID, I'm going to store it in a variable called user ID. Now, in order to grab a specific column from a row or a specific piece of data, use the row name, which is row, and in between brackets, you write what is the name of the column. So the name of the first one is user underscore ID. So what it's going to do is it's going to return the user ID for that user and store it in a PHP variable that we could use called user ID. However, just to make this a tidbit safer, what I like to do is I am going to, how am I going to do this? I probably should have typed this out before, but I want to explain it. I'm going to put everything in a my SQL underscore real underscore escape underscore string. Whoever made that function needs to, you know, learn how to make shorter naming functions because that is a pain to type. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this variable and throw it right in here. And what my SQL real escape string does is I want to say it just cleans it up. Whenever I talk about security, I'm going to be going over everything. And I don't I can't even remember if I talked about this in the last video or not. But I don't want to cover security. The goal of these tutorials right now is just to get the website to work. Once the website is working, then everything is going to be complete and then I'm going to be going over all of the security topics because I know that I didn't hash my passwords or I didn't, you know, cover cross-site scripting or SQL injection. I'm going to save that for the end because it's so much easier if I can explain all at once. So guys, for everyone complaining that my uh, website is not secure right now, I know it's not secure. I just want to save security for the very end and it's going to make it a whole lot easier on me whenever I'm explaining it to you guys. So basically, this is how we grab a piece of data from the database. So now that we did it for user ID, we need to do it for the other data fields too. So the first one is username or the second one rather, username and username. Uh, the third one is grab the email from the database and store it in a variable called email. And the last thing I want to grab the password from the database or the table and store it in a variable called password. So now what we have is four pieces of information from the temporary users table. The user ID, their username that they chose, their email, and the password, which whatever password they chose. So now that we have this information, what we can do is we can say, okay, wherever you see this information in the temporary users database, delete it and insert it into the permanent users database. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. That's what you have to look forward to. So thank you guys for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.